All right, so we're out here doing a drone photogrammetry experiment test. Um, wind speed is a little bit high. The uh, absolute wind speed is not too bad. Uh, it's about 14 to 16 miles per hour, uh, depending on what altitude we're looking at. Um, the altitude we're gonna be flying today is gonna be 150 feet above ground level and lower. Uh, gonna do a couple of orbits. Um, I'll put a link to the uh, Leechy flight plan uh, in the description. Um, at higher altitudes, we'll have a little bit higher gusts that'll be right around the rated limit for wind speed for the DJI Air 2S that we'll be flying. Uh, let's see if I can turn this around. Nope. Um, we've got our DJI Air 2S here going to be launching here in a sec but uh, I'll uh, post some ground video of the uh, autonomous flight path and then we'll get into some of the uh, processing and the overall results of the roughly 700 to 800 images of our test uh, facility here. Alright, so we've got our Air 2S powered on, all of the updated firmware has been installed, recalibrated the compass and the things we need. We've got our Leechy flight path uploaded here. All that's left is to hit start and let her rip. And here is where the critical part of flight planning comes into play. I export everything from Leechy into Google Earth so that I know the altitude of any potential obstacles that I may come into. Monitoring my flight path from the view of the drone as well as my visual line of sight and then I look at the flight plan in Google Earth just to see if there's any potential obstacles I may come into contact with. Thus far the uh, the flight plan seems to be holding true. There were a couple of closer calls where it got like maybe within 10 10 feet or five feet or so of uh, some trees, but so far, everything has been smooth sailing. So now that we've got all of the data collected for the uh, photogrammetry, uh, next step is to upload into whichever processor you want to use. I'm going to use several. Um, so I've used Polycam. Um, I do use their pro account. I think it's like a hundred bucks a year or something like that. Uh, well worth it. Um, it's a very good processor. Um, and it also offers you multiple options. If you go to the create capture on the side here, you have the option to create a 3D model, which is going to give you more of your mesh um, and you can export it as a point cloud 
or you can create a Gaussian splat. And Gaussian splatting, the way it was um, explained to me, is essentially you take the pixels and then you kind of average them with a bell curve into each other. So it'll result in a much clearer, better looking model, but may not be as ground truth accurate. But either way, I'm gonna run both. Um, and then I also use Luma AI, um, where I've uploaded a combination of uh, videos that I've combined into a zip file. So you just take your DJI images, create, um, yeah, so I'll just show you how, that, how that's done. So you just select multiple, right click it, compress to zip file, and then you can upload that zip file to Luma AI. And you can do the same thing if you want multiple videos, which I did down here. So you just select your multiple videos, same deal, compress to zip file. And then you take that zip file and upload it to Luma AI here. So you just hit create, and drag and drop, real simple. Um, I've noticed varying qualities between um, varying qualities of output, um, depending on whether you're using images or videos. I've had better results with images, but we'll see how this one does. And then the final processor that I'm gonna use for this data set just to test is Reality Capture. So kind of the same deal. Um, you just import all of your images. Um, you just hit inputs. Then you select all your images. You can also select videos, which I did, and it will take those videos, um, take those videos and break them apart by segment into still images. So you can see I've got all of them imported here. Your first step is you come up to workflow and you hit align images, which I've already done, and it will show you where each of your images was taken. That's what these little viewports are. So if I just zoom in and click on one for an example, if we were to click on this one, that's the actual image that was taken and is now being used to create the point cloud. So I'll get rid of that. And next in the workflow, once you've aligned your images, as we've done here, you hit start, and that'll create your uh, your 3D reconstruction with texture, vertex colors, and it'll use all your inputs to create a model. And it takes a while, so for this video's purposes, I'll pause this recording and jump back in once it has actually created a model for us. Or conversely, I know that one of the polycam models has already processed. So this one is just photogrammetry uh, done using only images, not videos. Some of the detail I was really impressed with and others I was not as much. Um, you can notice there's uh, some missing holes up here on this wall. And I think it may have something to do with the, uh, the lighting. Um, you can almost kind of see the light, the sun was up in this area. So this whole face of the building was really bright. So I'm thinking that's probably where the, uh, the gaps came from, but pretty decent detail. I mean, you can even read on glass. I know photogrammetry usually has a lot of issues with glass, but Yeah, you can see the numbers and everything. Things with lots of texture are really good for photogrammetry. They, they kind of help the other uh, pixels stitch together. And then slender bodies like this was a cross, it tends to have trouble with. Um, so the two arms extending out, it seems to have missed, but we'll see if that gets picked up on some of the other rendering models. Overall, I believe this was about 450 images that were taken to create this model. 
and significantly more for the uh, reality capture where the videos are broken out by frame. I think uh, about 800 for that one. So we'll see what kind of models those produce. Unfortunately for us, um, lately with Luma AI, um, as you can see up here, they're nearly at the, uh, the processing capacity. Um, so it's going to take longer for those to render, unfortunately, but their render sequence is very cool. Uh, just a quick demonstration of that here. So you can just kind of see how the pixels spread out and then the whole thing is colored. It's one of my favorite favorite aspects of Luma AI. I think it's one of their best marketing tactics as well, because I don't, I don't think this, at least as far as I know, as far as I know of, there aren't any other, um, platforms out there that, uh, that do that kind of render. And it's, it's very cool, but, uh, yeah, I'll pause for now and get back later when, uh, the rest of them have processed.